Hey guys, today I want to share with you how I'm going to update this clock. When I bought it, I really liked the face of the clock. I liked the colors, I liked the design, but what I didn't like is this dark gray. And so I'm planning on updating this with a lighter, brighter finish with some paint. First thing I'm gonna do is turn it over and try to remove this part of the clock. And then I'm also going to just clean the outer edge. I'm gonna use TSP. Um, again, whenever you're doing something like this, you can just use whatever you have. You basically just wanna get any dirt off from it, um, any grease, anything like that off from it so that your paint adheres to it well. So let's get going. So this is the first layer of paint that I'm going to put on here. This is going to be my base layer and this is like a lighter gray and this is by a company that is no longer in business. It's just something that I have. I've had this for years quite honestly. So you can just use any kind of chalk paint. This is a chalk paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply this and I'm going to do this in motions where I want to create peaks and valleys. because I'm going to put a different color on top of it. So I'm not really trying to get a perfectly smooth finish at this point, just going back and forth and getting full coverage. When I took the clock apart, I realized that all of this inside is going to show. So I've got the other piece off to the side drying and what I'm going to do now, because I'm going to have to paint the inside here as well, is I'm going to tape off all of the clock face along the edge so that I can keep a clean edge there. I'm going to use this green tape and what I'm going to try to do We'll see how this goes. Um, it's kind of the thing you don't want to have to do with clocks, but is I'm going to try my best to, I guess I'm going to have to use work in small pieces, um, have an edge that I can have up. And the reason why I want to do that, like right here, this is up. The reason why I want to do that is so that when it comes time for me to remove this paint that I will be pulling away from the center so that hopefully I don't take off any anything from the face of the clock. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to tape it off. I've already cleaned it all just like I cleaned the other piece. And then once I get all this taped off, I'm going to go ahead and um, paint this inside lip as well. This gray paint is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on the next uh, color that I'm gonna use. I was really hoping that I could find a white, but I did not have anything in white and chalk paint. I have, again, this old chalk paint that I've had forever by a company that 
isn't even a business anymore. It's called Country Whisper, and it's really kind of a light taupey tan. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on just in the same way that I did the other. Still trying to create some texture. Um, basically going to do it in the same way that I did it before. And I'm trying to get a really good coverage. There's no right way or wrong way of doing this when you're trying to paint in this way. Just however you can get it on there and create texture and get full coverage. Everything is uh, pretty dry, so now I'm going to take some really fine grit sandpaper. This is what I have. It's um, 220, and I'm just going to lightly go over everything. I don't, if I can help it, I don't want that really dark that we started with to pull through, but what I am uh, looking for is a little bit of that gray that we put in as the bottom layer. I want a little bit of that to show through, and so that is the look that I'm going for. So I'm just going to start gently sanding. And because I'm impatient, I went and I found some, um, some heavier grit sandpaper. Because I want just a little bit of the gray peeking through, I'm going to have to be really careful with this. Um, if I was more patient, I would just use that finer grit paper, but the reality is I'm not. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So as you can see, I got a little crazy with the sandpaper and it pretty much took a piece of it off. So all I'm going to do to fix that is just put a little bit more paint on there, let it dry, and it'll be fine. I'm going to finish sanding first. I really like how this has turned out. I got it all cleaned up, um, got all the sand stuff off from it. But I feel like I just want to take it to another level. Just give it a little more texture or a little more dimension. I really wanted the white, like I had mentioned earlier, and I don't have any white paint. But I did find this white glaze, um, again, something I've had forever. So I'm going to just use a chip brush and apply it. And I'll try to zoom in so that you can see what it looks like. Because it's going to be very subtle, but it's going to be what we need just to take it to that next level. I'm just going to take a little bit of it on my chip brush and I'm going to dab off a lot of it and then let's see if I can get it up close. I'm just going to go over all of it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it just gives it another little dimension and I'm going to do that over the whole thing. I 
guys, I am so glad that I added that glaze onto there. And I don't know if you can tell from the lighting, but it just added a layer of prettiness to this. That's all, it's the best way I can describe it. It's just so pretty. And again, you don't wanna put on a full layer. I just use this chip brush and you just wanna go over it really, really light. You don't wanna put on a whole thick layer. And again, it was just um, white glaze. Okay, so now I just need to get this all put back together and we'll see what it looks like together. Here it is, all finished. Man, what an amazing transformation. So I hope that you found um, some inspiration on maybe some items that you have around your house that you could give an update to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.